Hey guys, welcome back. This will be week four video for the Automotive Weekly Waveforms. And we're not adding an accessory today, but we're talking about some scope settings that are very beneficial. Now, this scope setting that we're talking about is AC coupling. And what that's gonna do is remove all of the DC voltage from our voltage trace. So if we're looking at a voltage trace that's sitting around 12 volts, we're gonna take that 12 volts away and we will be left around the zero mark. But what that allows us to do is narrow our scale down to like one volt and it'll really magnify our trace. Now in the Pico scope, since you can zoom in afterwards, you don't always need that, um, but a lot of the other scopes don't have that ability. So it is beneficial to set up AC coupling. Now, not all scopes have AC coupling or AC filtering. Um, we tried with an OTC Genesis and I couldn't figure it out. And I think that the AC mode on that is just for checking AC voltage because my waveform wasn't even on the screen. Um, but today I'm gonna to use the Pico scope just so you guys can see on the computer while I'm doing it. And I have a previous capture here. And what I wanna show you is, you know, we have our engine cranking right here and then it starts up and starts charging. Do we have any ripple or weird humps on that line? We can't really tell because we are looking at from here all the way down to zero. You know, if we zoomed in, we might be able to see something. Um, Bryn Klein uses a nice example of the ocean. This capture is like looking from the bottom of the ocean all the way to the top of the water. We can't really see the waves on top of the water. You know, they look really small because we're looking at too much space. But if we AC couple it, then we're looking at just the waves on top of the water. Now with the PicoScope, I can zoom in and we can see some of those waves. Um, but maybe they're not in quite the right detail. Um, if you're not using a Pico scope, then you can't zoom in and you don't have this power. So for this capture, I am connected to the battery of the vehicle. Now looking at the Pico scope, we are sitting just above 12 volts and I'm only gonna use one channel on this one um, just to demonstrate what it is. But if I turn on AC coupling, which Pico scope has it right at the top, snap on has a little button you push in the scope setting menu but I'm just gonna turn on AC. You see how it dropped down to zero and then it did get a lot noisier. Um, so instead of using a 20 volt scale, now this was on auto, so it's kind of jumping all over the place. I'm gonna jump down to, we'll, we'll try a one volt scale. Uh, we will have a little bit of noise. I think it's picking up some noise from my wireless microphone, but on a one volt scale, now our waveform, instead of sitting up at 12 volts, it's going to be centered on the zero mark. So we're gonna have waveforms that go above and below the zero mark. So really we have two volts on the screen. That should be more than adequate for this test. Now with this test, we're actually gonna do two tests. One of them is a relative compression check. Um, we're not gonna have a sink on there to identify what cylinder is which, but a relative compression check, we are just cranking the engine over um, without it starting, so we'll have to disable ignition or fuel, um, preferably fuel, but on this Toyota, it might be ignition. And we're gonna crank it over, and every time the vehicle goes on a compression stroke, that starter has to use more energy. So the voltage will drop on the waveform. And when it drops, it should be the same drop on every single cylinder. If one cylinder doesn't drop as much as the other ones, then we might have a cylinder that has weak compression. Now, if we were using an amp clamp, we'd be looking at the peaks because it's gonna be measuring the other way. As the amperage goes up, that's more compression. If we have a weak cylinder, we're gonna have less compression in that cylinder. And then we'll let it start up and we'll check our AC ripple from our alternator. Now, I'm still gonna check it at the battery, although you will get more ripple if you check it at the alternator, but this alternator is not the easiest one to get to, and a lot of vehicles aren't easy to get to. If it's easy to get to, you can check it at the alternator. Just keep in mind that it'll be amplified at the alternator because the resist resistance in the cable um, and the battery are going to absorb some of that AC ripple. The battery's gonna act like a capacitor. Um, so we're set on a one volt scale and um, and then I'm, I'm gonna put some more time on the screen. Since it's a PicoScope and I can zoom in afterwards, um, I'm gonna go up to one second per division and I'm gonna put a trigger on there. I'm gonna go repeat trigger 
I like it over on the left hand side of the screen. And I'm just going to put it right below the zero mark. As soon as we start cranking, the waveform is going to have to adjust. It's going to drop way down and then it's going to rise back up and it'll try to recenter it on the zero mark for us. But at least that trigger is going to capture it for us. You can do the same thing with the snap on. You'll just want to do a falling edge trigger and then put it at like negative you know, one volt or a quarter, not negative one volt, a negative quarter volt. Actually, even one volt will work because we're going to drop off the screen when we first initially go to crank. Um, but just below the zero line is all you need. And then when we start up, it'll start capturing. So I'm going to disable this from starting. We are going to pull, I can read the fuse block here. We're going to pull the ignition fuse. I know that we don't have a good way of disabling fuel. So disabling the ignition will work. We'll just have to make sure that we uh, clear the cylinders out because it will fire the injector still. And Valerie, do you want to crank it over? She always wants to crank it over for us. <laughs> uh, just keep cranking it. It shouldn't start. Yep. Okay. We'll stop the waveform. And you notice how it stayed right in the center? We, we had some ups and downs, but then it stabilized and went right in the center. So instead of being on a 20 volt scale where we can barely see the top of the water, now we're on a one volt scale and everything is, is pretty well amplified. So let me, uh, let me zoom in here and we can turn on some filtering just to clean this up. Um, for some reason, my picoscope's noisy today. Not that, turn on filtering. And we can see our compression waveform, our relative compression waveform in this image. Now it's best if you, if you drop down a cursor to kind of line things up. And I may have to activate some more filtering. And we have some slight deviation you know, in our, in our waveform. Um, it's not 100% you know, repetitive, but there might be a cylinder that's a little bit weaker than the other ones. This is one that we had a bad valve in, in a live stream over a year ago. We put a used engine in it. Um, we haven't had any issues with it, but there might be a slight deviation in the compression. So now I'm going to put the fuse back in so we can start it up. And this time we're going to be looking at the alternator ripple. Now, you rarely will see anything close to a, you know, a two volt or a, or a one volt ripple. Um, I did have a Honda Pilot a couple weeks ago that, that had ripple like that. But I'm going to drop this down to 200 millivolts because that's going to give me 200 millivolts plus and minus. So 400 millivolts total. I never like to see more than 300 millivolts of AC ripple from the alternator. So for this test, we're actually going to start up the vehicle and let it run. <laughs> we have a little bit of noise in the waveform, so we can bump it up to the next level. Especially since we can zoom in with the picoscope. But on a snap-on, I might activate filtering because we're going to pick up some ignition noise. Um, activate the filtering and then go to a smaller scale so that I can see everything in detail. Since I had filtering activated before, um, it applied it after I stopped the capture. I'm actually going to see if I can adjust that a little bit and clean up the waveform, but um, it's just going to be inherently noisy. And then this is my alternator ripple waveform. Now there are going to be other noisy signals in there, you know, from the ignition, from the injectors. Um, if there's any solenoids, like the purge solenoid, it's normally pretty noisy. It'll affect the signal slightly, but all in all, this is fairly even for my alternator um, ripple test. Now I can drop down some cursors. If you're using the snap on, I would just measure the high point of of a waveform like right here and then a low point and that'll give you your total ripple but I can just bring some cursors in here and I think those low spikes going down are are probably just noise from the injectors or coils so it tells me I have a delta between the high and the low of a hundred millivolts um, so that's that's not too bad I don't like to see more than 300 
more than 300 can introduce noise into other signals, especially cam sensors, crank sensors, um, communication lines, and even like the knock sensors. And since those, the knock sensors, especially since they're designed to pick up noise from the engine, if we introduce a noise on that, on that signal, we can cause lots of issues and the computer kind of freaks out. So that is how we use AC coupling um, in the vehicle. I would say that the relative compression check and the alternator diode check are the most common uses of AC Ripple, but we will cover a few more uses as we go down the road. Uh, many of you are using multi-channel scopes. If you want to incorporate this, which many of you have already, into your captures, then you can using multiple channels. If you're using the Pico scope or the ATS scope, um, you'll do your basic starting system test and you don't have to do the AC coupling. You can zoom in on that waveform. But if you have an extra channel, you might just hook it up to the battery and AC couple it just so we can see the starter voltage AC coupled and then our charging system voltage AC coupled and it takes away all the rest of it. Now there are times when you don't want to use AC coupling because you want to see what the actual battery voltage is. And in that case, then sometimes like on the snap-on, I'll grab two channels, I'll hook them both up to the battery, I'll run one channel with AC coupling turned on, I'll run the other channel with AC coupling turned off, so that I have the full battery voltage trace, and then I also have just the noise that's on the surface. I think that's it for this one. If you have questions or comments, put those down below. If you want to join the Facebook group where we are currently posting up our pictures for each week's assignment, then there's a link to that down below. Go ahead and join that and you can follow along and participate in the fun activities. Um, what I normally do is every Sunday I post up a new video with a new assignment or a new exercise. And then on Saturday night, we kind of do a live stream when we start covering some of those waveforms that we had in that posted during the week. Um, so if you want to see that, join the Facebook group. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. If you want to see more like this, subscribe, click the bell. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.